Yes, we are back and hopefully with a better and more coherent show for your viewing pleasure. The course for the next couple of episodes and to get some important stuff out of the way. But we're good now, so in fact, yeah, I think we're better now because right in my head I have this nice jazz tune playing in the background and just so you know, it's sounding awesome already. But let's get this show uh, pro going properly. Uh, I'm here with my co-host Lars. Hello everybody. And I am not here with my co-host Gally, who is probably sleeping on the couch because of the trip to Fane from uh, Thanksgiving. <laughs> uh, Happy, Happy Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving for America. For America, yeah. Let's also just get right, uh, get this right out of the way. Let's introduce our two special guests for today's episode. Uh, Let's first greet, uh, greet uh, the former KSV spy and heavy and the MGE champion of the world, Cal. Hey guys, I am Cal and I'm from England land. And at the moment I do things like sleeping and eating because I'm a student. And I play TF2, CSGO and any game that isn't a MOBA. Because MOBA's is <laughs> a shit. MOBA's a shit, I'd like to agree with you but I can because I have to remain impartial. Okay, our second special guest today is Team Awesome's resident trader, hater, and his former heavy. Hello, people. It's Torchy here. I'm from the Czech Republic, which is in Central Europe, in case you don't know where it is. Um, in real life, I'm a student with quite a few hobbies. I like to play computer games, uh, guitar and stuff like that. Um, my favorite games, well, I don't really think I have a favorite game, um, but I have been playing Borderlands lately and yeah. I'm gonna assume that was awesome. It, no, it was shit. <laughs> <laughs> right, uh, for today's program we have your regular community news, uh, the team for just competitive uh, overview and our very first uh, feature debate on a specific subject. Now today's episode is going to be rather Team Fortress centric so if you hate Team Fortress uh, hopefully Rob will have put a link in the bottom that skips you straight to the uh, final section what's in the box so you don't have to hear any of all that hats and trading crap stuff. So let's get uh, let's get today's program started. Community news for a magic post up top where Rob is asking for your frags because he wants to make a massive Team Awesome frag movie. However, we have also seen really weird work in progress videos show up on YouTube of a TA motion picture. Are these things related? Are they different? Lars, what do you think? Um, I think a motion, uh, motion picture is something really different than a frag movie. Frag movies are really like uh, central, and they try to like mix really good with uh, music. I really like it when frag movies like re really are fit together with good music. Like um, I mean, with with like with the frag movie of um, from Pram that was uh, that won a Boneyard contest. That was a really good video and mixed really well with uh, music. And I think um, the other thing is really something more of slow motion action based. Don't think it's quite as fun. <laughs> motion pic motion picture would kind of imply story with the script and stuff. Is Robert thinking of a biopic? Because he was no looking idea. for because he was looking for uh, source filmmaker people to help him out with some stills. Yeah, uh, I heard um, I heard Ghost was helping him with that, but if we want the information from that, we have to go to Ghost himself or Rob. No, nah, I asked Ghost, but Ghost doesn't even know. <laughs> so this is uh, a dark project no one really knows about. Count Torture, you have any idea on it? Um, I've seen frag movies where they mix source filmmaker clips or sh um, stills with the frags to try and produce a more like filmy experience to it. Like you know, there are things like Prem, which Lars said is more of a frag um, show, where there's minimal editing to go with the good frags, while Something like a frag movie or a motion picture could well be like mixing in source filmmaker to make it a more cinematic mm -hmm. experience. Oh, a cinematic experience. Torchy, you any idea 
views on this? I think that this could be pretty interesting if quite a few people that play T Team Fortress 2 and TA joined the project and contributed to it as well. Um, I'm not sure I'm going to contribute myself to it because I don't play the game anymore, but well... Might have a fancy frag lying around, so everyone who does still have fancy frags lying around, pump them into Rob's thread because he wants them. Yeah, I heard I heard that Rob like wants to get every member in. So even if your frags are really bad like mine, <laughs> you don't get a lot of good frags, just send them in anyway. I guess you have a really good frag where do where double gets the kill. <laughs> <It's a> kill <laughs> stealer. <laughs> right. Um Another point on the agenda. Christmas is coming in less than a month from now. We'll all be sitting around a tree, shouting at our family members that we hate them and they should have never come to the come to our house. That's really depressing. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm trying to catch on with a fad. Uh, but yeah, Christmas with TA. Last year we did a uh, Secret Santa and probably some Team Fortress shenanigans on Christmas servers. Yeah, I remember that we put on. The Christmas map of Payload Badwater. I wasn't there. Snow! Snow everywhere! Uh, but what do we want to see for this year uh, happening in TA? More Secret Santa? More uh, Christmas activities from other games? G uh, Gamer Thrown Reverence in items. I really want Valve to add Game of Thrones items like Winter is Coming. Game of Thrones. Four of. Team Fortress Game of Thrones items? Yeah, Team Fortress items. Alright. <laughs> Fancy stuff. Cow, you want anything to happen with Christmas in, in the community? Uh, um, I, if there's a secret Santa, then I won't enter it because every time that I try and buy someone a gift, it ends in me crying in a corner because I don't know how to buy gifts. No. To <laughs> <laughs> so, it's like, I don't know... I don't know what to buy, so then they just get sent money, which kind of makes no sense in a secret Santa. What's it if you? But if there's chances for me to win prizes by losing to Wasted in an event, <laughs> then I can go for that certainly. Secret <laughs> Santa this year, everyone is uh, mad. It is mandatory for everyone to have a wish list set up. Otherwise, everyone's just poking in the dark. Torture, you've got any Christmas wishes? Um, I'll be I'll be happy if uh, they made a th thread on the TA forums this year, with everyone contributing with their good wishes and stuff like that. Uh, that generally, I, I don't think I want much really. <laughs> Come on, Torchy, brighten up! It's Christmas. Everyone will be happy. I would be happy if this done. Torchy, uh, Torchy is an easily pleased man. I wouldn't say so. Well. <laughs> Not in TF2, anyway. Alright. Okay, so, um... That's all the community news that I could dig up right now. The forum has not exactly been full of drama lately. If you have news, remember to submit it to us, because we love some drama and we love to report on it. But let's get, uh, let's get on with our next item, the TF2 news. We have more comp results for you. Lars, let's hear the sixes. Um, well, the sixes season is over for etf 2 l uh, five teams of the TA community has entered, and they are all and two of them have actually been promoted to higher divisions. Death of Pan Impact became in first in Division 5F and are now going to Division 4. Congratulations to them, and we're very happy that you won. Se uh, second uh, team that has been promoted well, is Team Div Chess, the newest team. They play second in Division 6N and are being promoted to Div 5 next season. Well, get ready to die. Has placed fourth in Division 6C. Team Austin second play. Team Austin placed second in 4C, just not getting the promotion to Division 3. Really sorry, but a great team, really great results, and just a uh, little bit of bad luck. Get this done. Placed third in 4E. Uh, that's really respectable in the case they were in a really hard, um, hard division. And but they seem to be more focused on other things like ESCA or Europe, where they fight teams like Absalon. That's really hard. That's all the Sixers team. Wuta, how is the Highlander going? Highlander, well, UGC is over for KSV. We ended up in ninth place, which is a good result, considering uh, our last season's attempt. Uh, but we are now, and the Team Awesome May team, are now fighting in ETF 12. KSV, apparently, we are having some 
trouble finding our feet. Uh, planning our feet? Nah, I don't even care about idioms anymore. But uh, we're having some trouble in ETF 12. We only managed to play a draw against Viscous and Delicious. Uh, and losing to Hot Love yesterday, which was a shame, but we're working on it, and hopefully we'll get better. Uh, team Awesome, main team, Waltz, team teammate, and won 6 nil on Steel, I think it was Steel? Second week Steel. So, congratulations to them, and good luck on the next match to everyone. Now, the moment you have all been waiting for, ladies and gentlemen. The featured debate. Are we ready for this, gentlemen? Absolutely. Yes, no. I am. Absolutely uh, not. <laughs> My body is ready. My body. Yeah. I okay. just wanted to say that. <laughs> <laughs> Beat you to it. Today we will be discussing item adding speed to Team Fortress 2. Has it gone too far? And is it completely insane? Allow me to give you a bit of an introduction to this to, uh, to this topic. Uh. Combined, the summer, fall, and Halloween update, Valve managed to add over 250 cosmetic items to Team Fortress 2. Just to give you a small contrast to this, there are now uh, 686 cosmetic items in Team Fortress 2. And in just 6 months, Valve added 40% of all of them. That is, well, 40% of all the items added over a total time span of 4 years. Which is, well, pretty much nearly half of all the items that are now in Team Fortress 2 have been added this year. If you, That's a lot. That is a fuck ton. If you're gonna compare it to the number of weapons in the game, there are 147 unique weapons in the game. Matthew will quickly see that the hats and misc items outnumber the weapons 5 to 1. Damn. So, has this gone too far? <laughs> Jackets for the medic do we need? The soldier really need a fedora? What's all the point of this? So uh, we have invited our two special guests here to discuss this subject and Lars who is a veteran in the trading field to discuss this uh, hot topic with us. Can I get a uh, pers uh, yeah, a measure of the perspective from all of our participants? Lars, where do you stand on this issue? I said on the issue that I think, yes, it may be a little lot, but I also think that it's really good for the community. You now have more ways to specialize your character and really be unique. That's what Valve has been aiming at, that um, everybody has the possibility to come up with a new unique character, so it doesn't, so it isn't the same as boring game, because if a game exists over six years, you have to keep adding it and make it interesting. Um, if everything stays the same, it's gonna get boring. And I think it's good if there's a side to it that you can customize your your character the way you totally like it. Mm. Uh, Kao, what is your view on this? Um, I think that they're adding game um, hats to the point where there is performance issues in the game. You know, they're at, the hats start to look the same. I mean, Spy has about two million fedoras, and he must be getting pretty bored trying to pick between each one in the morning. And it's just, I really. Would I wish they'd put more time to the money they're, they're getting, which they will be getting a lot of from Hats, and while the community will be getting money, Valve get a lion's mm -hmm. share of it, and that's not that great. So I do wish that they'd put that back into the TF2 team so they could put more money into balancing items, even though at the same time I don't wish they'd add loads and loads of items like they did in the Uber Up, because they've shown time and time again that they can't really balance weapons that well. Like, they either don't have the money to... Um, resources to, or they just don't want to ask the people who would be able to give their opinions on balance, like veterans of the game. So, I wish they'd spend more time balancing mm -hmm. the game, essentially. Uh, you'd have m rather more community input on the gameplay rather than uh, just ads and mods. Yeah. Fair point. Torchy, what's your point on this? I think that this is outrageous and kind of kind of sad if you look at look at it from a certain perspective. Um, I mean, Valve has added 50% uh, pretty much all the cosmetic items in the game in this one year from last Christmas, while last mis Christmas was also the last time they added weapons. Three weapons, kind of controversial. Uh, well, dare say that two of them were pretty much useless in a more competitive, serious scenario. Um, but I'm not going to get... Uh, 
uh, into too much detail about that. Basically, I think that they should really turn down the whole um, Hab and Misk uh, releasing spree. Because, well, I think it's mostly caused by the giant popularity of the Steam Workshop, because now they have the community to do the work on the mm -hmm. hats for them. Well, that's not exactly what I wanted to say. <laughs> I'm a, I'm a terrible speaker, but well, basically it's getting a lot easier for them to release large numbers of cosmetic items in a short time, but I think it's not really a plus to the game. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, Valve added the uh, gold star function, which allows you to test your items, and if they function in-game, then there is a much larger chance that they will be added to the game. Uh, unfortunately, this only works on cosmetic items, and as Torchy remarked, it has been a year since we've last seen a real new unique weapon, and even longer since we've last seen a decent new unique weapon. Uh, but this is something I want to hook into, because uh, a lot of weapons, uh, I mean, a lot of items have been created by the community, and have been added by Valve Response. The community store was first launched, so the Manco store. Uh, it launched with the polycount update, and in the first month, the creators of the polycount update earned about forty thousand dollars each. <laughs> yeah, um, ice and demand, blah blah blah, all economics. By now, people should probably not be earn earning forty thousand dollars per person because of the massive number of hats. Uh, has Valve been, you know, trying to spread their profits or? Why are people still making all these hats despite the fact that you're probably not going to earn $40,000? Because um, it's fun. Because it's fun. It's also worth noting when the body count hats were released, I think they were $17, $18 each. They were much, much more expensive than even the most expensive now, like, you know, the fast yeah. learner and such. And it really depends. People make it because. They'll get a get a self-made quality item of a hat they really like. It's money, f you know. When you're a graphic designer, people like Rusky do or whatever. who are putting a lot of items into this game. It's almost you know, a stable income for them off of you know a video game item and doing what they love. So, mm -hmm. and isn't that everybody's dream? Making money for nothing. It kind and of is. make making money from something you love. That's everybody's dream. That too. Uh, but yeah, with, with such staggering amounts of items being added, uh, the, uh, the bulk profit probably is going to get split up between all the, uh, all the creators. But it also, uh, well, yeah, pretty much everyone in the game now has a hat. It's really hard to find, find someone who does not have a hat as a, uh, as a prestige item has completely plummeted. And the only way to really show that you're still cool is through an unusual what would you say that unusuals have done to, uh, to the trading environment? Because that has really shifted the balance in uh, prestige. Yeah. Um, first of all, the usual market has really changed from a few years ago. Um, I luckily got out when I foresaw the market crash with the new unusual effects. But with all the new usual effects, people are really not aware of what they are actually worth. They think the new effects are worth a lot more, but people don't want to pay for them. Um, the only prestige you can get from unusuals is like when you have the really expensive ones, like the team captains, or the other ones, or as the new trading ship happens, the Australian app weapons, that which have been up, which been brought into game by the two cities update recently. Silly gold items. They turn bike. people into gold. I know it's amazing. No, it's not amazing. Um, yeah. So, in all, uh, all in all, uh, the prestige has shifted from place to place. Uh, but it's also that the quality of the items that have been added, uh, when Valve first added the first number of hats, they just fit over the character's old uh, head covering. They didn't really replace anything. That changed with much higher uh, polygon count hats, and more and more and more were added over time. Uh, Torchy, do you have a particular example of a hat that you absolutely hate when it was added? I absolutely hated the anger, and I still do, because, I, I mean, it's just, um, it's a kind of mediocre hat, and I feel like most people just use it the cowl. It just look 
it just looks kind of mystical and uh, kind of like fiction. <laughs> just, I mean, yeah, I just don't like the hat, and I'm uh, I'm not exactly a fan of everyone using it. I mean, it's kind of hard to come uh, come by. And mix it with, with other items to make it, yeah. you know. Yeah. I, I see snipers wearing that hat everywhere. It's like mm-hmm. kind of the villain's veil of the hat world. Because that's something that's interesting because uh, some hats just work at first, but then they release a second uh, second misc item, and then all of a sudden the hat works. Um, so can you name. Uh, uh, an item that you would say was shit at first, but then suddenly they released a misc, and now everyone thinks it's cool. Uh, I, th- I think I can do. You know the uh, skull items you can get while crafting with your unusual uh, metal. Mm-hmm. Um, there was once a bug, which are now really worth a lot, when you could get the little uh, scout fire eyes. You know those items. Um, there was a glitch at first where you can equip that with the. With the um, with the uh, skull on, which would be really cool. You could have like a skull with skulls and fire eyes, <laughs> and then everybody loved that fire eyes hat. Yeah, but that's that's a glitch hat. What I mean, what I meant is, for instance, uh, let's say the demo man had uh, uh, a, 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 uh, is it no, not Tamo Shanta, the uh, the other Scottish hat. Help me. Um, you're talking about the Prince Tavis's crown going with the King of Scotland cape. Yeah, well, that was um, one such example. Yeah, there's one such example. I was actually looking for the other Scottish hat, uh, which I forgot what it was, but it Do was. You mean the uh, Glengarry bonnet? Yeah, the Glengarry bonnet, which is typically a Scottish thing, right? And during Christmas they uh, they added, added a kilt. Yeah, they added a kilt, and then after that they added a Highlander sash, and it just kept going and going. So now you can have your. Uh, your full Scottish Highlander demo man, while at first you, well, had to make do with just your Glengarry bonnet. Uh, but these combinations, uh, they kind of make sense, and it kind of motivates to make new hats that would make sense, but Valve also adds a lot of hats that make absolutely no sense. Or for the soldier. Can we do without these hats? I don't know, because people will make these thinking that they look good on, you know, that their soldier could do with a fedora. And then, mm. they, then you know, it gets in and they're very happy. Yeah, but uh, let's see where the pyro also gets a lot of, uh, well, a lot of silly hats, like just one antler to put on his head. Or the crazy googly the- eyes. Uh, the googly eyes, uh, but the, uh, the pyro kind of has uh, a Mexican theme going, which I think is really nice. Why don't we get more Mexican stuff? People don't like Mexicans, so they don't make the Mexican items. <laughs> Silly. Um, I think it's just because the pyro doesn't have a character. He's crazy, and therefore you could make anything for the pyro, and it would still fit at a basic mm-hmm. level. So, you know, that the antler looks stupid, but it works on the pyro. It wouldn't work on any other class, but it just... Would you say that, uh, for instance, for the pyro, the items could work to add some personality to an otherwise empty character? Essentially, he's like Gordon Freeman being completely a blank canvas for you to portray your own personality on, in this case, with hats. Don't take that as an idea for Half-Life 3, Valve. (laughs) (laughs) It's copyrighted right now by Cow. Uh, Let me think. Um... Torchy, let's get back to you for a second. Uh, you snapped and left the game uh, after too many hats were added. Is there any one hat uh, besides the anger that, that made you, well, the lack of items most of all? All these hats that pushed you over the edge to say, nope. nope. Well, I didn't really leave just because of these hats, but I didn't really find the game very interesting anymore. I uh, quit comp quite a while ago. And uh, had pretty much zero hopes of finding a new team because I was rusty and all that. But uh, to get back to the question, um, I didn't really hate any specific hat, but I was just kind of outraged by the fact that most of the hats seemed kind of unfitting to me. You know, most of the characters have their own like 
personality kind of enhanced by the meet the team videos and these had just didn't seem to fit their characters and basically the way they would like act or something they would work and stuff like that I didn't like about these mm -hmm. that and there were way too many of them mm -hmm. uh, one thing I'd like to ask all three of you uh, do you feel like you play the game to get more hats or just to play the game Ooh, play the game mostly yeah, just I a don't fun think... game in general the apps are an addition very few people would play the game purely to get hats I think because uh, with the exception of the highest tier of traders, very few people, you know, would spend most of their time on the game just to make their in-game character look better for mm -hmm. no purpose. Um, what I noticed, like, with a lot of traders, you kind of start off when you find the game out, you, pay, you play 200 hours, then you find out about trading, you get really into trading, but as you keep playing the game more and more, you eventually get, like, into competitive, and then you drop trading. Just the number of hours you have in, you have on Team Fortress 2 can possibly tell if you are a trader or are you stepped out of trading. So trading is the highest tier you can go in Team Fortress. I don't think that. <laughs> no, but it kind of sounds like it because you only get the really cool items if you can trade really well. Doesn't matter if you're the great champion or well, even still, someone will want five thousand dollars for his unusual. Or pan. Or a pan. Or a pan. <laughs> Which brings me to the next point. Uh, Team Fortress 2 is cool and all that you can customize your character uh, in, 80, uh, in 80 instances, and that is disproportionately little. So before a brand new player has some hats to show off, it could be hours and hours in. Which I think is terrible because there are so many options, and uh, this customization part is uh, omitted until a very uh, very long, on, uh, very late into the game. Uh, I think you... Valve. Sorry. No, please go on because I had lost my train of thought there. But pl please pick up where I left. Um, I think Valve. You know, they have achievement hats to kind of pick up the uh, thing. You know, the foundry hat they give us. You know, just all those hats like that, just to um, you know allow people to get their sense of customization while they're. Trying to, you know, to become premium and get their hats and make their characters look pretty and dress up, you know, it's. But at the same time, it takes a very relatively cheap amount, like two weeks or so, of metal to buy a hat, whereas it would cost five pounds or, you know, five hundred, six hundred TF2 gaming hours to get a hat of your own mm -hmm. for free. Um, I kind of agree with you there, because when I first started playing out, when I got the Gibbous, I was really happy, because finally I had a hat. And after that, I also went to customize myself. But after that, um, there were so many options. And, uh, well, not at the beginning. At the beginning, I saw a lot of scouts who were the same things as me, and it really pissed me off. But when more and more items were added, I could customize my f own very own character, and was really happy with that. So all the crazy items are all bad, I hear, because they do allow you to uh, express a certain amount of individuality. Yes. But I think we can all agree that it takes a long time before you can finally achieve that individuality. About eight, well, yeah. 800 hours on my account. Yeah, despite Sadly the, it does. Yeah, that's the crazy thing about it. It takes way too long for you to get all these crazy items. If you're, poor, if you're rich or not. Yeah, if you're rich or not, no. But then again, you might as well just, you know... Buy a uh, buy an Xbox One or something with all that money. No uh, console wars here. <laughs> we're not going to do a PC console wars. Shut okay. up. We're going to do. Uh, we're going to another time. Uh, any particular argument would like to add to this discussion because I can imagine that you have some uh, very dark lights to shine on things. Um, I would maybe like to ask you questions about. Uh, to count Tochi, how do you think the unusual market has been affected from before the fall update of last year and to now with all the new crazy unusual effects and the balance of unusuals have been shifted totally how was it before the the new effects were headed in the Halloween for last year 
Well, I wasn't around uh, with unusual training for very long before that, but yeah, I think that essentially the the entire unusual market got kind of crazy when all those effects came out, because um, it was just, just like, okay, there's going to be a batch of new effects on Halloween, and then the prices are going to stabilize and all that, and they kept getting new hats, new effects, and then it's pretty much gotten to the point where it is today where you've got an unusual market with lots of unusuals still waiting for their price to stabilize being one of one sometimes even still dropping from the crates no one knows if they're going to be limited or not and stuff like that Mm -hmm. Um, what I really think is wrong that all the new cosmetic items that Valve has been adding and adding uh, that uh, they all can get unusual even the robot hats they can be unusual and I really think it's bad because if there are more hats that can be unusual there will be so many different kinds of unusual so it will be just the prices will just change so much that it's really impossible to find a good price for anything because all the prices are changing it's just not fun anymore. Even if you like, if one of the new ads is your favorite, and you want to get a new user of it. It's a, you have a very slim chance of getting it because it it might not even be unboxed version of it yet. Let's stand that you want that you get the effect you wanted. Pretty much that. I remember that it used to be possible to um, kind of make up the price of a hat with a certain effect based on the demand for those hats and effects. And that was kind of easy to think of, think it up, and just like predict what the price of the hat would be. But nowadays, it's just a huge mess because there are just so many. Uh, I couldn't agree with you more, Cow. Do you have anything to say about this but, question? Um, yeah, basically. Sorry, just moving my mic there. Um, I was somebody traded pretty much all the time through this period and I've recently just sold all my stupidly expensive pixels so that's good because it's the problem with the trading community is people have always needed a kind of like something to tell them how much their hat is worth you know people won't go people while tending towards hats they like won't trade for it just because they feel like their hat's worth a few more dollars and things like TF2 price check and Pat TF's price list, while always being trying to say that their price guides are always taken by, as Bibles by some people. But the problem is, there has been a huge amount of hats and effects added to the game. And suddenly, you know, half the hats and unusuals in the game that are coming onto the market, people don't know prices for because they can't consult their Bibles. So we have people trying to, you know, people losing them for very little money, people spend spending them, but at the end of the day, these ha- the new effects are never going to be something that are as popular as the original ones, because the original ones were very simple. And then, you know, there was fire, there was weird green fire, there was, you know, sun, spooky ghost, hearts, all that. Well, nowadays, we've got, like, cards floating around your head and such, and it just doesn't look as neat if you're less professional. And I, I think that the new effects. Uh, sorry for interrupting there. I think that the new effects look way too abstract, and kind of crazy. Exactly. To, to be oh. very. Um, in, um, I think the first to, to Halloween. Be very much in- with, sorry for interrupting there, but the first Halloween um, in user effects, they were kind of cool. I mean, the skull that would come out of a rain cloud with like uh, white eyes. And um, the raining knives effect. Uh, the first like new effects that we had, they were kind of cool, and the prices for them are like pretty stable now. But um, after there were Christmas effects, and there were robot effects, and there were again Halloween effects for the second time, they were just getting sloppy. <laughs> Guys, I want to wrap the discussion up. Uh, All right. I'm hearing quite a lot of interesting points. Let's see if we can uh, get to a uh, get to a bit of a conclusion. Uh, let's get this one first. Unusuals are out of control. Yes. Very much that. I think very they should be, though. I think they're, you know, they're, they're your very rare and special items. You know, they shouldn't mm-hmm. be bounded by some price sheets and someone telling you it's worth this, you know. Yeah. 
Okay. You should just pay what you think you would pay for and what you or want to pay for because you like the ad, not on making profit. Exactly. Anyway. I, w- I want to pay one euro for it than usual, but no one's going to sell it. <laughs> yeah. You have to pay a little bit more if you're really <laughs> wanting it. Yeah. Uh, okay, unusual is out of control. Uh, other items, Valve, it's nice that you add so many. Uh, it helps you express your individuality, but make them more accessible much faster. Yeah. Mm, I, I don't stop have an opinion so on it. Well, you have to look at, at their point of view. They are a company and they want to make money on a game that's relatively old. And they have to put they have to put work on it to keep it updated from time to time to keep it interesting, and to make back all the expenses for the employees, which Valve pays a lot. Valve pays a lot to their employees and gives them all these kind of free snacks. They have to make money off this game, and with if they add more ads, they'll make more money eventually. I'm pretty sure they have already made a lot more money on Tier Two than they pay their workers, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. I imagine yeah, it's but, very profitable um, right now. Yeah, but it's a company. They want profit. They want profit. Boo for capitalism. <laughs> I, would like, I would like to quote Michael Pactor on this issue. Uh, the guys at Valve are smart, and if there's one thing they know really well, is how to make money. So I think all Valve's money issues are not an issue. Uh, but yeah, I think we found some resonance here. Chi, you want to add anything? Because I didn't hear you there. I think that Valve, if they want to keep uh, going with this hat releasing spree is that they should really focus on actual hats and not masks because I mean um, it's the way it started like the whole hat fad um, uh, well basically uh, um, the hat uh, hey, Jesus Christ sorry for stuttering so much um, the, pro- the process of creating a hat uh, poses much more of a challenge for the um, for the maker than making a mask because you have much more creative freedom with masks you can make pretty much anything you want you can completely transform the character which is also one of the things about masks that I don't like because it can make make uh, it kind of confusing to properly you know tell the class and team of the player you see in front of you and yeah the mask is all okay Well, good point. Uh, Right, so I think that will be all for that discussion for now. I think that we could do a special on this looking at the workshop, because there are quite a lot of weapons in the workshops that I would love to see added. You guys be up for discussing something like that? Um, yes, but you do. You do have to know if the when weapons are being added to the workshop, they can maybe the the owners will like will put in the description what the effects are and how it changes it. But ultimately, Valve decides what the stats are, and yeah. if they don't think the stats go good with the weapon, how it looks like, I'm pretty sure Valve just ignore stat suggestions completely. Mm-hmm. They, they do. Just... Uh. Yeah, there's this one thing in the in a workshop that I've seen. It's a, uh, a bar of di- uh, a bundle of dynamite for the spy, which replaced the sapper. You can uh, speculate wildly what it would do, but I would say that it would explode. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's finish up this discussion. I think it was good. Right. Let's go and play. What's in the box? Dun 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 dun. Dun 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 dun. Okay, well, the rules here are simple. I ask each of our special guests three questions. The first, uh, by the end of the three questions, the one with the most correct answers will win a mystery prize. And the mystery prize in for today will will be from a Manco Crate Series Seven. A mm-hmm. an unboxing from uh, Counter Strike Crate. Mm. Or finally, uh, a mystery uh, game from my Steam inventory because I know both our special guests are not big on the crating anymore. Uh, <laughs> um, I'm afraid you're right. <laughs> okay, then, let's get this show on the road. Okay, let's open a Nena Cow Torchy. That's good. Okay, let's. Who gets to begin? We will decide this with a coin flip. Okay, cow is heads, torch is tails. Flip. And, and. Okay, cow, you get this question. Alright. Get ready for this. Okay. 
What is another name for the flight data recorder? The black box. The black box. That is the correct answer. Very good. First question. What video game character likes to hide under a cardboard box? Um, damn. Come on! I am absolutely not knowledgeable in video games whatsoever. I want to rip your head off for not knowing this. Uh, I'm afraid I'll have, I'll have to let you when we finish this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I give up. I don't know. Sol solid Snake, What's man. Snake? I don't Better play console solid. games, man. <laughs> Neither do I, but it's like video it's game so popular. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, shame on you. Shame indeed. You uh, don't need to tell me I'm impossible. <laughs> Alright, so let's stop been said. Talk to you for now. Would I continue? Would I? No. Would I? He's Would dead. dead. He's Are you still hearing dead. me? Because I'm out <laughs> no. of the lags. Oh, yeah, no. oh, that's good. Yeah. The 800 oh, ping strikes again. This is why you need. <laughs> this is why, if you fall out of this, I should have also had the questions. Oh god, here he goes again. <laughs> here he goes again. We should just have like a little oh, like, god. flash no! screen that just says technical difficulties. <laughs> <laughs> do do do. This is where cliches get good. Uh, this is why also that last recording not just made. Just send me the questions, I'll ask them. Am I clear or am I cracking? No, you're, you're clear, clear. But you just keep going out. Oh, that's annoying. Uh, let me try and ask another question. Rob Coward. can edit this. I mean, Rob is magic man. Spooky. Props to Rob. <laughs> Roberto. Uh, I'll send the uh, question to Lars. He can ask them. This question then is for Cal, hopefully. by the way. Alrighty, let's see it. Uh, Show me the money. money. In, in a 19 1993 episode of The Simpsons, Mr. Burns bribes two nuclear physicists with a choice between a box or a... What does the uh what what does the other thing he tries to bribe with? Oh Jesus Christ! This one's kind of hard. I don't know it myself either. Me neither. Jesus! <laughs> Come on, time to get you off. It's like uh, it's like a mystery box, and he's like, you know. You could continue with this ridiculous bro Why? but you could get what's in the box. Or so it's like fucking, um, they get to trade like, I don't know. I give. Uh, the, S the, the answer was a washer or a dryer. Spooky. Yeah, it's really spooky. <laughs> um, Wuta, do you think you can ask the second question to Torchy? It's now 1-0 for Cow. Still, still Dodgy, if you get this right, uh, it will be 1-1. One one. Yep. Am I still clear right now? Yeah, you're clear. Yes, you you're are. Clear. Okay. Just go for it, go for it. Yeah, 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 okay, okay. Uh, question, kind of the same. In a 2000 episode of Family Guy, Peter and his family attend a timeshare to get a boat or a box. What's in the box? Oh, I know that. Well, jeez, I've never, wa I've never watched Family Guy. You disappoint. What Certainly country do you not live? the 2000 episodes. You, you, you can watch Pokemon, but not Family Guy. <laughs> well, I really don't know that. Okay. Would I give him the answer? <laughs> Large spill the beans. No, you do it. I'll trust it to All you. Right. You're the one who asked the question. <laughs> oh, Lars. The, the Lars! Two tickets to the comedy club. I never have guessed that. No. All right. Final question for Cow. Would I go F ahead? Final question for Cow. If he gets this one right, uh, he wins. 
so it's kind of uh mysterious. <laughs> I kind of feel like I should ask the question first to torture, but we're just gonna go ahead. Yolo. Okay, cow. According to Forrest Gump, what's life like? A box of chocolates. <laughs> that was yeah, really so easy. What going to get? <laughs> oh yeah, the one for torture was easy as well, though. Well, what was the question for Torchy? It's last question. <laughs> oh, come on, then. What's written or painted on the blocks that Mario gets his mushrooms from? A question mark. Yeah. That was me spitting up my cider. That was so <laughs> hard. <laughs> uh, easiness aside, we have a winner! And that is Cow. Yeah. Congratulations. Now, from where do you want your prize? I'm going to have to go with the mystery game. It's, I just can't get over how mysterious this game is. <laughs> it must be super mysterious. Okay, in that case, we'll roll a die. Let me get a die from somewhere. Use the internet. I am using the internet. Damn it. Okay, let me add some numbers to all the games in my inventory. I have five, so... I'm going to get a re-roll on wrong six. Okay, there's some big ones and there's small ones in there, so it's gonna <laughs> roll die. Roll, roll, roll. And it's a two, that means that you win. Serious Sam 3. Oh. What? Nice. Good. You've never job. played Serious Sam before, just a bit like ruin everyone's day, so. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good game, man. Right. Sounds good. Same series where the big kill was added. What? Oh, Lars? I even I know that isn't. That... No, not that game, but the, game, the uh... game Siri. Oh. The right. game series, it's that game series. Uh, but Sam and Max is different serious Sam, isn't it? Yeah, it is very yeah, it's different. massively different. Sam and Max is like a point-and-click puzzle-solving game. Well, no. You know what I mean? You're like a detective, and you click on things, and you add it to another thing, like toast, and things happen. And then you hit the road. Yeah. I know Serious Sam is just a big shooter game. It's definitely not the same as Sam and Max. Absolutely not. Okay, that well, was, that's... Man. Yeah. But that's all for what's in the box. I've just sent you... Oh, wow. Off. Accepting right. the gift. Accepting. Right, that means that we can wrap up now. Uh, we do this with traditional shout-outs. Uh, let's start from the top. Cow, anyone who wants a shout-out to? No. <laughs> no! I don't know. Selfish man, keep their shout outs. <laughs> don't you, anyone you want to shout to? I want to shout out to Tanuki. Hello there, Tanuki. I have finally voiced my opinion on TF2 uh, cosmetic items in a civil manner. That one's for you, Tanuki. Awesome. Lars. Oh man, I should have got papers. Please. Um. Shout out to Rob for getting engaged. Congratulations, man. I hope you have a happy life. Well, shout happy out to life you. Life. Shout out to uh, Wuta. You have any shout outs to anybody? Yeah, yeah. I want to shout out to Ducky because Snipe told me to give a shout out to Ducky. <laughs> so that's served. Right. This was the Awesome Cast, episode 3. Hopefully, next week we have a brand new discussion and brand new games for you. And more What's in the Box. And less awesome. stuttering. This, dicka, is dicka, dicka. this was uh did you hear the awesome cast? Signing off. Bye. Bye.